And I'll let you guys be the judge for a second. How well that's working for me. I still got a little bit of wrinkles, but I, I think uh, I need to remove that with Botox. Welcome to Vigorous Health. I'm Coach Steve. How to stay looking young on cycle. <laughs> because now that I'm off cycle and I've been off cycle for a while, I think it's been f almost four months now since I like to do performance enhancing drugs for bodybuilding purposes. I mean, I took ACG, Novelix and Clomid, obviously, to recover my HPTA, which is now pretty much recovered. So I'll do a blood work again at the end of this month to confirm and see where I'm at without these fertility drugs in my system. So in between that time and now, I've been seeing a lot of comments. Steve, you look so much younger. Steve, you look so much better. Steve, it's like you're aging backwards. And whether that's in the comments section or here in real life, I mean, a couple of guys didn't even recognize me when I came into the gym after a three-week lockdown here in Thailand. I had to do a double take and, oh, Steve, Dude, it's like you're aging backwards, <laughs> literally. I've heard that several times now. And this is factoring into my decision-making process heavily going forward. Because yes, at one point, I'd like to take PEDs again. You know, I'm a bodybuilder. I like to be big. I like to be swole. But I also like to look young. So this video is mostly for myself. And you guys can listen in to the advice that I will uh, put into practice going forward. You, t you guys can take from this what you will. It's going to be 100% truthful and maybe contain a couple things that will not be applicable to your situation. Hey, the timestamps are there. You can skip ahead if you want to. Now, when you compare my face and my physique uh, to four months ago when I last took performance enhancing drugs, I was noticeably bigger, <laughs> almost 20 kilos bigger. Some of that was water retention, which was um, very noticeable in my face. Now, I think the golden rule here is to minimize facial bloat on cycle. Because, of course, you know, age is predominantly judged on the face and the texture of the skin and the amount of water retention that you have. And a little bit of streamlined face, you know, with a nice pronounced jawline is the one that's going to give you the most youthful appearance. So, I'll put it three pictures. When I was on cycle, right before I started PCT, when I was probably the most streamlined in my face because my serum testosterone was, what, 171 nanograms per deciliter before I incorporated ACG at the start of my PCT. And now, now I've been in a caloric surplus for, let's say, eight weeks. So I'm not as streamlined anymore. I'm holding a little bit of fat and judging my, my waist circumference, um, I've definitely been in a caloric surplus because my abs are unfortunately non-existent hey i'm trying to recover this hpta the best way possible and for that i feel i needed to be in a caloric surplus given i was on exogenous hormones for eight years continuously so we'll do three muck shots on cycle before pct and right now so you guys can see the difference there's about four months in between and i feel that i look the youngest when my testosterone was the lowest and I was still in a caloric deficit. So we're going to go with facial bloating and facial streamlining here first to stay looking youthful as possible on cycle. Now, my philosophy going forward is to take the lowest effective dose of testosterone, which is still hormone replacement. So probably the next time I decide to take PEDs, I'll stay around 150 to 200 milligrams of testosterone a dose of testosterone that will give me favorable estradiol concentrations. Now, I will add the Prima Ballin back in because I feel that the skin texture that you get, the anabolism and the anti-estrogenic properties of Prima Ballin will help to keep this testosterone at 150, 200 milligrams per week around the top of the reference range. And again, it's the estradiol and testosterone that both contribute to water retention in the face as well as everywhere else in the body. So I want to keep the testosterone and estradiol somewhere at the top of the reference range, but not over the reference range. So that's, let's say, total testosterone, 1,000 nanograms per deciliter, and estradiol around 40 picograms per milliliter. And I'll use primabolin as my additional anabolic 
and my um, secondary aromatase inhibitor for its secondary aromatase inhibiting properties. So I won't use any methane, I won't use any calcium deglucurate, and I'll adjust my testosterone dose based on my serum estradiol concentrations. I'll stay with bi-weekly injections, so that's Monday and Friday, to promote a little bit of estradiol conversion, because how much estradiol conversion will I get from 150 tests, 200 tests, with um, you know a, a surplus of primabol, and that's, I'll start at 200 milligrams, but I'll probably slowly bump it up to you know 300, 400, 500, etc. As I'm trying to regain my old physique, so I feel that that combination, total testosterone at the top of the reference range and estradiol at the top of the reference range, using primabol as my sole anabolic, and an aromatase inhibitor, should give me the best possible face aesthetics going forward. Those will be my only two injectables, and I will not use any Winstrol, Anavar, or any other oral because I'm trying to regain my liver health as well going forward because I don't want to deal with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease ever again because I took a pretty big setback um, <laughs> regarding how I look right now. Even though I look younger, my physique is uh, <laughs> you know, far from impressive. Let's just put it that way. Now, when we're on the topic of facial bloating, growth hormone will be restricted to one to two units per day at maximum because, again, growth hormone promotes subcutaneous water retention, and you'll see that in your face mostly. Now, what I think I'll do is still maintain one unit of growth hormone before fasted cardio and one unit of growth hormone before the workout, space that apart a little bit, so I have about eight hours in between, and that should result in the lowest amount of subcutaneous water retention instead of doing a 2 IU shot before cardio or before the workout or before bed. Because in this case, of course, growth hormone promotes IGF-1 conversion. But I think going forward, considering that IGF-1 contributes to aging you know, significantly, I'm going to restrict growth hormone intake to two units per day and use 500 milligrams of metformin before bed to bring that IGF-1 down to double digits, not triple digits. Because I get my serum IGF-1 around 200 to 250 nanograms per milliliter when I use two units of growth hormone per day. But when I add metformin into that mix, again, like you see in my last blood work, 60 to 70 nanograms per milliliter, which is good for anti-aging purposes. So that's where I will keep it going forward. Now, I won't use metformin just quite yet because I'm trying to stay as natural as possible right now. And of course... Metformin is passing through the liver, and I want the lowest amount of liver stress to make sure that non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is resolved before I decide to take PEDs again. While we're on the subject of facial aesthetics, I realized that the last time I was during the off-season, and of course during the off-season when you're in a caloric surplus, and uh, you have steep carbohydrate intake, especially when you take uh, double-digit IUs of Lantus to facilitate carbohydrate absorption, you hold a significant amount of water also in the face. So that contributes to facial bloating. So going forward, as I'm trying to regain my previous best shape regarding body fat levels, and I don't find it necessary to get back up to 115 kilos, I'll be in a caloric deficit. And a caloric deficit is going to prevent water retention in the face and make sure you stay on top of your facial aesthetics when you add in PEDs that promote a little bit of water retention. So let's say I get a little bit of water retention from the testosterone and estradiol at top of the reference range, a little bit of water retention from the primabolin, and a little bit of water retention from the growth hormone. Again, the, the amount of water retention you get from primabolin is pretty much negligible, so I shouldn't even mention it here. But I'll still mention it anyway. So by going on PEDs, you'll hold some sort of water retention and being in a caloric deficit will prevent a large amount of that water retention from occurring in your face. So you'll maintain facial aesthetics given that you're in a caloric deficit. And it doesn't have to be a steep caloric deficit. It can just be a small caloric deficit. And you can judge your caloric deficit by taking a picture of your face in the morning and comparing a picture of your face in the evening and seeing if there was a tremendous amount of additional water retention. Now, if they're pretty comparable, your caloric deficit is sufficient. If they're very pronounced, your caloric deficit is not sufficient. And if they're actually identical, so you look 
just as lean in the morning as you do in the evening, or you look leaner in the evening, you're probably in a very caloric, uh, a steep caloric deficit, and you might want to increase your calories a little bit to facilitate more anabolism. So for me, of course, I will continue with the ketogenic diet and limit carbohydrate exposure to um, post-workout on my leg day or on the refeed in the weekend and make sure that most of those carbohydrates come from, um, you know, unprocessed sources with some antioxidants. So whether that's uh, quinoa, or rice, or some vegetables, or some sweet potato, or maybe a little bit of oatmeal, not the processed foods, because of course, processed foods with a lot of saturated fat or uh, preservatives might contribute to oxidative stress as well. So feel that diet highly contributes to how you look, as you're on cycle because of course you know steep caloric intake and some of the performance enhancing drugs might put a significant amount of facial bloat on you which will detract from your overall facial aesthetics and your youthful appearance so i will be in a caloric deficit for the you know maybe the first six months that i go back on cycle like as i'm figuring out my maximum effective prima and dose and testosterone dose and which ratio I don't require either an aromatized inhibitor or exogenous estrogen just to keep my estrogen at the top of the reference range. So as I figure that out, I will be in a caloric deficit to regain my previous six pack. Now, what I've been doing for the last 20 years since I started bodybuilding is to reduce the oxidative stress. And either that comes from, you know, vitamin E or vitamin C supplementation, and acetylcysteine. Now I've been using oral reduced glutathione and I've used injectable glutathione in the past. I'm doing everything I can to keep the oxidative stress to the bare minimum. Okay, I'll be honest, I enjoy the occasional cigar. Maybe that's once a month, once every two months, maybe twice a year I drink. And of course, some of the supplements and performance enhancing drugs that we take in bodybuilding can contribute or indirectly contribute to oxidative stress as well. So for example, carnitine and choline supplementation can convert into TMAO in the intestinal tract, which contributes to oxidative stress. Arachidonic acid directly contributes to oxidative stress and makes you very, very sore. So that's one of the reasons why I prefer not to take it, because honestly, I don't like to be sore, <laughs> you know. To be completely honest, I don't enjoy being sore and walking around, you know, not being able to get off the toilet properly. And of course, you know, something like a DNP, that's the master of oxidative stress. So that's something you definitely want to avoid. And I feel that some of the potent androgenic compounds indirectly contribute to oxidative stress by increasing workout capacity. And of course, some of the metabolic byproducts of intense and strenuous hypertrophy workouts are direct oxidative agents. Now, there's always some sort of adaptive response here. So the harder you train, the more your body adapts. And some of that adaption includes the antioxidant defense system, which is present in the body. So I feel that when you're enhanced, you're taking performance enhancing drugs, especially more potent androgenic compounds. Some of the antioxidant supplements that we take, whether that's vitamin C, vitamin E, NAC, glutathione, etc., those need to be present to prevent some of the oxidative damage, which simply occurs from strenuous workouts. To keep this antioxidant defensive system going by providing adequate amounts of antioxidants through supplementation or by dietary sources. So I feel that I've been doing that most of my life, but going forward, I will definitely make sure that I get a sufficient amount of antioxidants I mean, I've been taking a thousand milligrams of vitamin C with each meal. So six meals a day, that's 6,000 milligrams of vitamin C plus whatever I get from a little bit of fruit or um, vegetables that I'm taking. So let's say it's 6,500 milligrams of vitamin C, 2,000 milligrams of NAC, a thousand milligrams of reduced glutathione and 800 IUs of vitamin E. That's a lot of antioxidant potential. So I feel that those supplements have been contributing to my overall youthful appearance for the last 10 to 20 years that I've been taking them. So going forward, I will definitely stay on top of my antioxidant intake and make sure that I don't subject myself to unnecessary oxidative stress, whether that comes from supplements, PEDs, or um, you know recreational cigars or alcohol consumption. Probably limit that to birthdays only, so that's my birthday and my wife's birthday. 
twice a year. I don't think that's um, going to do too much damage. But the performance enhancing drugs, yeah, I will make sure that my exposure to the oxidative ones is um, completely non-existent going forward to stay as youthful as possible. And then the last thing I want to touch on is skin texture, which can actually be promoted by certain performance enhancing drugs. I feel that from my own experience and experience that I have with clients, I feel that there's only three compounds that really contribute to the skin texture besides testosterone, given that your hormonal intake is consistent because inconsistent hormonal intake or fluctuating hormone levels will contribute to acne if you're prone to acne. So again, you know, besides the fact that acne can detract from your skin texture, some of the performance enhancing drugs can do that also. I feel that the 90 nors are very, very bad for your skin texture, but some of the DHT derivatives, considering the dosages are moderate, might contribute to skin texture. So I feel that Primabolin and Anivar, you know, considering that they're both prescribed in medical conditions, especially Anivar for burn victims, contributing to favorable collagen synthesis in the skin. I feel that those two compounds are very favorable and that the non-DHT derivative would actually be the boldenone. I know that everybody that uses boldenone gets very favorable skin texture. Um, so if you can deal with some of the GABAergic anxiety side effects that boldenone might uh, cause in you, I feel that that's a suitable PED for skin texture. And again, uh, considering the fact that you're excluding the Mastrone, excluding the 19 yours and the Winstrol, because those are, uh, you know, don't really contribute to skin texture and might actually detract from it. So besides testosterone and making sure that your hormone balance between testosterone, estradiol, DHEA, pregnenolone, etc. stays favorable and stable to prevent acne formation, again, if you're prone to it, besides testosterone, I feel that boldenone, primabolin, and anivar can actually contribute to your skin texture and overall youthful appearance. And 19 nors, po more potent DHT derivatives like Mastrone, Winstrol, even Proviron, Superdrol, Anadrol, I feel that those compounds detract and you should just stay clear. Again, if looking youthful is one of your parameters when you're going on performance enhancing drugs. It's, uh, it's definitely important for me considering all the compliments that I got in the meantime, while well, I'm not taking performance enhancing drugs. The skin texture can, of course, come from two other places, whether that's from the diet or by using some uh, cosmetics, for example. I feel that collagen intake is very, 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 very important. Again, I have to emphasize it. Collagen intake is very important when you're considering skin texture for youthful appearance. So whether that collagen intake comes from, um, you know, beef or fish or chicken or eggs, they all have their own collagen types or through supplementation, for example, from a collagen type one and three protein powder from hydrolyzed bovine hide or hydrolyzed bone broth in the form of gelatin protein powder, which also has collagen type one and three, but it's mostly found in the form of gelatin. Or maybe uh, collagen type 1 from hydrolyzed fish skin, which tastes a little bit dank, so I can't really recommend it. But collagen type 1 and 3 or gelatin, I take that on a daily basis and I really feel that it contributes to skin texture and skin glow, you know, as um, fruity as it sounds. Really, skin texture from collagen, supplementation, even in the absence of performance enhancing drugs, it really, really helps. And there are several topical methods which will highly contribute to overall face aesthetics, skin texture, and give you a youthful appearance whether you use performance enhancing drugs or not. So what I've been doing for the last few years, and it's certainly very cost effective, instead of using those expensive scar creams with vitamin E, you simply take sunflower vitamin E, 200 IUs per capsule, you break those apart and use that as a moisturizer after taking a shower. So I would shower a couple times per day, and every time I would take a shower, which would dry out the skin a little bit, I would break apart a vitamin E capsule and use that as a moisturizer. And when I would suffer from acne, and it was pretty bad at certain points, you know, whether that comes from diet or hormonal imbalances, whenever you would, 
I would make an adjustment to my PED stack. I would break apart a 10 milligram Accutane capsule and mix that with a 200 IU Sunflower Vitamin E capsule and use that as a moisturizer with antioxidant and anti-acne properties. And trust me, it works very, very well. So you don't get any of the acne scars due to the vitamin E and you don't get any acne formation due to the Accutane, which is contained within. Now, if the lotion or it's not enough volume, you can simply mix that with any of the cosmetics of your choice or maybe use a cosmetic that is aimed towards men. So I never really went shopping for cosmetics. I would just buy my aftershave, my shaving foam, you know, deodorant and hair gel, and that would be the extent of my shopping list. But as part of my sponsorship arrangement with Gorilla Mind, Derek from More Place More Dates sent me his Kosh Cosmetics. And honestly, guys, I've been using this youth serum ever since. So I'm on my fourth bottle now. I usually use this as an aftershave. I don't shave every day. I shave every other day because I'm, you know, a little bit lazy and it doesn't grow that fast. But I use this youth serum as an aftershave and it's very similar to the vitamin E hack that I've been using for the last couple of years because this contains tocopherols, vitamin E, which is more potent than regular vitamin E and vitamin C is another antioxidant and it contains hyaluronic acid. So given that shaving is a little bit invasive and acts as an exfoliant, making your skin a little bit dry, I've been using this as my aftershave. And for the last couple of weeks, I've also been using the Kosh moisturizer. So I've replaced the cheap vitamin E moisturizer with the Kosh Cosmetics moisturizer and I've been using that instead. So after I took my shower in the evening, I use this once per day before bed. And then I use the Kosh Youth Serum, let's say every other day, as an aftershave. And I'll let you guys be the judge for a second, how well that's working for me. I still got a little bit of wrinkles, but I, I think uh, I need to remove that with Botox. Again, age is catching up with me and those brows are mighty dynamic. So let's summarize a little bit and discuss at the end of this video how to stay youthful while you're using PEDs, limit testosterone exposure to top of the reference range and keep your estradiol at the top of the reference range so you don't have so much facial bloating, stay in a caloric deficit to minimize facial bloating, minimize growth hormone to one to two units per day, again, to reduce facial bloating again the, the trick here is facial bloating guys most of most of your youthful appearance will come by how your face looks and keeping that streamlined by reducing water retention is going to be the bulk of your youthful appearance now youthful appearance will also come by keeping your antioxidant intake high and minimizing oxidative stress whether that comes from peds supplementation or some of the, you know, enjoyment things that we have in life, alcohol, cigarettes, cigars, recreational drugs, they all contribute to oxidative stress. So you want to minimize your exposure to those to, let's say, birthdays or celebrations only, maybe two times per year. That's it. Minimize processed food, stick with whole foods. I've been doing that most of my life, or at least for the last 22 years that I've been bodybuilding. So I really feel that that helps. Going forward, I will keep my facial bloating to a minimum and hopefully don't gain another year on my age or five years. So I look over 40 the next time I go on performance enhancing drugs again, which might be a few months from now. So. Stay tuned, I will announce here on YouTube when I'm ready to take the plunge again. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're looking for the most comprehensive guides to bodybuilding pharmacology, you can find the ebooks on my website, vigorsteve.com slash shop. If you're looking for personalized advice, you can find the rates to my services in the services section and contact me through the contact form if you're interested. Follow me on Instagram, it vigorsteve. Highly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Vigorous crew, front double biceps. You guys are awesome. See you in the next video.